Hi Space Lab, I'm Kyle Cranmer. I'm a professor of physics at NYU and an experimental particle physicist working at the Large Hadron Collider. Our first question comes from Alp Erol, who asks, to make the latest finding at CERN consistent with the theory of relativity, what would be the mass of the Higgs boson? When we produce a Higgs boson at the LHC, it decays almost immediately. So we don't actually see it, we see the particles it decays into. But one of the cherished laws of physics is that energy is conserved. So it, it's neither created nor destroyed. And in this case, it just flows from the Higgs boson into the particles it decays into. So we see those particles and we measure them with our giant uh, particle detectors. And we can take that uh, together with Einstein's theory of relativity that tells us that energy and mass are related to each other through E equals mt squared, that the energy of the particle is related to its mass times the speed of light squared. So when we put all of that together, the energy of the particles that we measure in our detector and E equals mc squared, we find that the Higgs boson weighs about 125 times the mass of a hydrogen atom, and it makes the Higgs boson the second heaviest particle that we know of. The next question comes from Toberti, who asks, if the Higgs field explains only 4 to 6 percent of the matter in the universe, with what experiment could you prove dark matter or dark energy, which would explain the rest of the matter? So we actually know that dark matter and dark energy are there. We've just never seen them on Earth. When we look out in space and we look at how galaxies rotate, uh, or we can see that there has to be something else there, and that's the dark matter. We've even been able to image dark matter from collisions of galaxies and things like that. So we really know that it's there. We just don't know what it's made out of. There are two major avenues of experiment that are being undertaken. One are experiments that are deep underground that try to actually catch dark matter particles that might be just streaming through Earth. And the other kind are at the Large Hadron Collider where we hope we can actually create dark matter and then study it in detail. Now dark energy is a different story. We really don't know what it is. When we look out at the universe, uh, we see that the galaxies are uh, moving away from each other and that the universe is expanding and that expansion is accelerating. So that's what we call dark energy. It's like space is allergic to itself and pushing itself away, almost like anti-gravity. Anti uh, but we don't think that dark energy is made out of stuff in the same way that dark matter is. So we don't think that we can like produce a dark energy particle, but we do hope that we'll understand what it is. But it's really one of the big mysteries of the day. And the question with the most thumbs up comes from Hood ESRB. If a black hole attracts all objects close to it with its strong gravity, how come it attracts light, which has no mass and thus isn't affected by the black hole's gravity? But light is affected by a black hole's gravity. While Newton thought of gravity in terms of massive objects attracting each other, Einstein taught us that gravity had more to do with geometry and that massive objects or a, a huge amount of energy would actually warp the geometry of space and time. So what does that have to do with uh, how, a, how light travels through space? Well, light wants to go as the fast as possible, the shortest distance between two points. And when you warp the geometry of space and time, it changes how light's going to travel. So for instance, if you think of an airplane traveling from uh, New York to San Francisco, it wants to go the shortest path possible, uh, and it will. But when you look at it on a map, uh, it, it looks like it's flying through some sort of curved, uh, curved path, like it's going out of its way. Um, so we understand that really it's not going out of its way, it's just that the surface of the Earth is curved. And so it is with space and time. The space and time is curved due to the presence of the black hole, and that makes the light look like it's traveling along a different path, kind of out of its way, but in reality it's going the shortest path possible. Thanks for watching, thanks for your excellent questions. We'll have a new expert next time, so leave your questions in the comments below and we'll be sure to answer the one with the most thumbs up. See you next time.